Now, if you've been following the Premier League at all this season, you may have noticed Roberto De Zerbi, the Brighton manager. But you won't be the only person who's noticed him because another coach has noticed Roberto De Zerbi in the Premier League this season, and that is Pep Guardiola. He's got a quote here. We have an Italian coach in the Premier League, De Zerbi. He's changing many things in English football. He's producing wonderful football. People said you can't play the ball from defence in the Premier League. He's doing that and incredibly well. And the interesting thing that stands out to me in this quote is this phrase here. He's changing many things in English football. So what is it that De Zerbi is doing to change English football? Well, before we can answer that, let's just remind ourselves what Brighton are trying to do on a football pitch. And if you want a fuller explanation of this, we have a longer video on the TIFO IRL channel. Make sure you're subscribed and you can catch that there. In a nutshell, Roberto De Zerbi's football is all about a battle for space. What do I mean by that? Well, we all know that if a team sits deep to defend, it's much harder for an attacking team to break them down and generate chances. Whereas if this team are able to be tempted out of their defensive shape, spread themselves out in possession like this, and suddenly a huge amount more space is opened up but the opposition can then attack. So how do we generate these conditions which will make it easier for the team to attack? Well, the way that most teams will do that is by sitting deep themselves, giving the opposition the ball, and then forcing them to break them down because the upside of that is that you generate all of this space. So what you'll see is the opposition trying to get onto the back line here. They'll use width, they'll push forward, they'll possess the ball and they'll work the ball around trying to create some kind of opening where they can then score. But if they don't manage to score and the ball gets turned over, suddenly the defending team becomes the attacking team and there is all of this space now for them to exploit. But there's an obvious problem with this plan and that is that it relies on the idea of giving the opposition possession of the ball in order that you can turn it over and then generate these transitional moments. And the issue is, is that the more possession that the opposition have, the more chances they are going to have to score. Now Roberto De Zerbi wants the best of both worlds. He wants to be able to generate these sorts of transitional situations and he wants to do it after artificially through his own possession. In other words, he wants to generate artificial transitions. So what does this look like in practice? Well, this is why the concept of build-up is so important to Roberto De Zerbi, because by setting his team up deep in the build-up phase, what he's actually doing is inviting the opposition to pressure him, push forward, and then lo and behold, you are generating a lot more space to attack and the ability to artificially transition has been created. Now this sounds easy in theory, but in practice, this looks quite scary because we all know that on-rushing attackers can close down centre-backs, win the ball back and score. And for this reason, Roberto De Zerbi has lots of patterns in place so that his team can actually work the ball around this situation, get it ball into more advanced situations and then enjoy the transitional wonders that lie at the other end of the field. So what do these patterns look like? Well, here's an example. So let's imagine that the centre-back here is in possession of the ball, they've slowed the play down, they're standing with their foot on the ball, and the idea is that they're going to bait this player and the opposition into the press. So when this player presses forward, what they're actually doing is making sure that they're covering the player behind them in their shadow. What that means is that the ball cannot be passed to the player that's left behind them. But for Roberto De Zerbi, all that is doing is opening up an indirect route to the player that has been left. So this centre-back then passes the ball to his centre-back partner, and an immediate bounce pass is played into the feet of the centre midfielder. And what you've done then is you've evaded the first line of pressure. But what about if another forward pushes onto the second centre-back, stopping this pass? Well, actually, all you've done then is open another indirect passing route, which you can bounce off the other member of the double pivot into the feet of the same central midfielder. And once you're through the first line of pressure, you can start enjoying the benefits of this more transitional situation. And there's a number of different things you can do. You can try and find the wingers immediately. Often what you'll see with Brighton is them dropping their strikers and pulling the centre backs with them because that creates even more space in behind but it also opens up these indirect routes to the wide players as well so you can maybe flick the ball through to Karen Matoma and again you're generating these transitional situations which are really nice to attack. So how is Roberto De Zerbi impacting the Premier League? Well if we go back to this man Pep Guardiola and take a look at how his team have been building up over the last few seasons we can already start seeing De Zerbi's influence on English football. So on the screen here we've got a build-up phase for Manchester City against Liverpool last season. This is at the Etihad and if we look at that that build up phase. Manchester City are building up with a back four. They've pushed their full backs forward. They've got their two centre backs split quite far apart. And the whole idea here is about generating width to be able to move the opposition around and possess the ball in that way. Now in the middle here, we've got two pivot players in Rodri and Bernardo Silva. But if we fast forward to the beginning of this season, we can see that Manchester City have moved away from that 4-2 shape to a 4-1 shape with Rodri playing as a lone centre midfielder. We've still got this back four here, but they still want to get the two players in the middle and the way they do that is by inverting the fullback. So we can see that once the ball is in settled possession, once Manchester City are happy that they have control of the ball, we're going to see Joao Cancelo move inside, 
So at this point of the build-up, we can see here's Rodri, here's Cancelo, we've got the double pivot shape here, and then the three at the back here. So that's the famous 3-2-5 shape that everyone likes to talk about when they talk about Man City this season, but they've only arrived at that shape after they've moved the ball through the first phase of possession, and then they've been able to invert the fullback. Now, as the season has gone on, things have changed. What we've started seeing is Pep Guardiola getting his team lining up like this. So this is the first phase of possession. We've got the back three here already. The goalkeeper has joined them to make a back four. But what we have here now is that rather than starting the fullback out in the wide area, which is where you'd expect them to start in the first phase of possession, Man City are just moving them in in that first phase. So you've got the double pivot right from the off. So what we have now is a 4-2 shape, which is very narrow. Actually, the build-up is going to be focused around the center of the pitch. And this actually looks very similar to Brighton and Hove Albion. So this is how Brighton look under De Zerbi. We've got the back four here in quite a narrow configuration. We've got the two double pivot players here as well. And what we're going to see is that Manchester City are going to start applying some of the principles in their build-up phase that we've seen from Brighton. Now in this situation, Manchester City have moved into a back three because the goalkeeper is obviously in goal. They're further down the field, but the principles remain the same. So what we've got is Ruben Diaz here on the ball, baiting the press from Mohamed Salah. But by doing that, he actually generates a lot of space around Rodri. Now at that point, Salah is blocking off the pass to Rodri. So Rodri is technically in Salah's cover shadow, but this push by Salah is actually a trigger for John Stones to move across, find space so that this pass can open out. So what can actually happen is we start getting this S shape that we see in Roberto De Zerbi build-ups. The ball goes through, Stones can play an immediate pass to Rodri, they're through the first line of pressure, and then Rodri can turn and you can start enjoying the benefits of that transitional moment. And that's exactly what happens because Rodri ends up with the ball. He is then able to play the ball through the next line of pressure. Actually, the ball comes through to Alvarez, who plays a bounce pass into the feet of Kevin De Bruyne, and then Kevin De Bruyne sweeps the ball out to Jack Grealish in the wide area. But the important thing to notice is that from this point onwards, Manchester City are now in a transitional moment that they've generated themselves. This is an artificial transition. You can see there's four Man City players up against four Liverpool defenders, and this is a really dangerous situation from which to attack. I just want to show you another example of a build-up pattern that Manchester City use, because it's not just that they're going to try and get the ball through the middle to generate these sorts of transitional moments. They can also do other things as well, but the threat comes from the fact that they can find these routes through the middle of the Liverpool press. Now, in this instance, we've again got Ruben Diaz on the ball. Cody Gakbo is going to press towards him, but what this is doing is generating an indirect route into the feet of John Stones. Liverpool are aware of this, and so what we can see is their press converging around this area. But actually, rather than Diaz playing the ball through the middle here, what he does is he exploits the narrowness of the Liverpool press here and goes wide. So we can see now the ball is at the feet of Manuel Akanji. You can play it around this pressing unit to the feet of Kevin De Bruyne. He plays a flick pass immediately into Riyad Mahrez. And once again, we're in a transitional moment. We've got four Man City players here, only three Liverpool defenders. And this actually does result in the first goal, the equaliser. And this whole situation is produced through a moment of artificial transition. So Roberto De Zerbi has a unique play style which sees him generating these really dangerous chances through artificial transitions. And it's so impactful that we're seeing managers like Pep Guardiola pick up on them and try and implement those sorts of ideas in their team's own playing style. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.